All right, so today I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite little areas in Midtown. And then within Midtown, uh, OKC, there is a pocket neighborhood called SOSA. And what SOSA stands for, it's an acronym for South of St. Anthony's. And Midtown is such a great area. I mean, heck, 20, 25 years ago, uh, that area, there wasn't much around there other than just a hospital and a bunch of housing. You know, a few other uh, restaurant shops, uh, and uh, boutiques of sorts, but nothing that would really bring you away from where you were currently going. Um, so what they've done over the years is they have really improved it with housing updates, housing, housing improvements, new restaurants, new bars, um, just a whole litany of things that they've done, um, a long list of areas that, you can, that really bring you down there to go want to hang out, have a date night, hang out with your friends um, so it's, it's a great place to see and I'll, I'll show you all the areas where there's restaurants and there's bars um, there's shops coffee shops etc so we just turned east uh, from Classen so now we have officially made it kind of into uh, Midtown because Classen is the westmost boundary uh, for the Midtown area and then we just passed some areas right there with the common uh, which is an apartment complex uh, area here and then this is the edge uh, apartments as well as we get past Dewey um, but some other things to note over here on uh, back at the Commons there's a, a great little bookstore in there coffee shop called Commonplace Books and so just to the south of us right now because we are within Midtown is St. Anthony's so we're kind of right close to the St. Anthony's um, campus and so then we, as we go up here to Broadway we're going to turn south and go through Automobile Alley, and then we'll come up on the um, southern portion of Midtown, and that's where we'll be at Sosa, because we'll be south of St. Anthony's. So, and so just north of uh, Harvey Bakery is uh, Heritage Hills area, which is a historic area. Beautiful, beautiful homes that have from the early to mid 1900s. And then we're going to turn right here on Broadway, make it through here, um, and this kind of begins Automobile Alley. There's uh, lots of shops through here. Um, there's a uh, restaurants, Jimmy B's, and then over here on the left is the Oklahoma Contemporary Arts Center, Tesla as well, which is a great uh, area for Oklahoma City with the Tesla dealership. And then right here is kind of where it starts to get uh, lots of restaurants. Patch, great area for breakfast next to it, owned by the same restaurant group is Broadway 10 and then just across the street over here is uh, a, a bar that they have called Sidecar and they take those three concepts and kind of keep those three together and they're doing that in several areas in the city they've done it um, up north and then they're going to do it again over by Rose Creek even further north and a little bit to the west um, we got Hideaway Pizza here so now we are on 6th Street and we're kind of on the most southern portion of uh, the Midtown area. St. Anthony's is just about two, three blocks, probably three, three blocks uh, just to the north here. And then one of my favorite listings that I had, I helped a customer uh, buy this listing and then uh, several years later, um, as his family was starting to grow, they decided they were no longer needing to live downtown and they moved into a development up north but this is the dwellings at Sosa. And this is the developments right through here. There's uh, two and three story, um, basically living houses that are here. Uh, they all have rooftop balconies. Um, and it's right here, the uh, dwellings at Sosa. And I was at 841 Northwest 6. Great, great property. Had fantastic views of the city. On the left here is a awesome diner probably the best cinnamon roll in town by far it has uh, this warm skillet that they come out all the icing and everything's all melted and gooey and hot and they have this large cinnamon roll that sits in it it's the best thing you want to eat when you're on it when it's a cheat day absolutely 100 percent. and then right here this tacos and good times if you want tacos and good times you can go right there and then just to the south of that is a place that's a, a kind of a co-working space if you need a place to go work you need a place to kind of plug in and do some stuff uh, there's that co-working space just on the other side of uh, Tacos and Good Times. So you can work and then go have some Tacos and Good Times. 
this uh, hotel right here, this motel, this class and in the superette, uh, they just revamped that here within the last probably year and a half or so. Um, I find it super interesting. It has a kind of a mid-century modern kind of feel to it, kind of retro uh, motel. Uh, I don't have any reason to stay there, but I think it would be fun sometime to come down there just to stay for a night, just to kind of get the vibe of kind of the retro feel of that motel. So I'm going to go up here and turn on Walker, and we'll head south towards uh, St. Anthony's. And uh, I'll also show you a few of my favorites that I like to hear. The Commonplace Books that I mentioned a minute ago is right here. So there's a bookstore, and then there's also a coffee shop next to it. They, they, have, they have fantastic food and coffee there. Uh, that's Sincerely Coffee Roasters. They roast their own coffee there. It's awesome if you ever want some really, really great coffee. Farmer's Bank's here. You got these little restaurants uh, through here. And then Not Your Average Joe, that's another great coffee shop. Just steps away from the other one, but uh, that's a good place to go and meet and have coffee. Little boutiques, uh, Louis Bar and Grill. If you ever want waffles, right here, Waffle Champion is fantastic. And then you've got this historic hotel, The Ambassador. It's a Marriott product or a Marriott property but the Ambassador Hotel. Hey, and there goes the, the streetcars. That's fun. Stella, uh, right here to our right, 1492 next to that. Uh, Cafe, Cafe de Brazil, as I run a stop sign, sorry. Cafe de Brazil here on the left. They do a great patio or a great rooftop in the summertime during the warmer months. Um, if you ever have a need a place to do, uh, oh, insomnia cookies, oh my goodness, you'll love those. Um, but Barkeep. Barkeep's a great place to go if you need to stock your bar, buy gifts for somebody. Uh, Barkeep is the way to go. Uh, Kaiser's here is uh, actually uh, a historic building right here. It has to always remain as Kaiser's at, um, in that place right there. Um, it's been several different things, but as far as the building is concerned, it's part of the historic district. It'll always read Kaiser's there on the outside. It, back in the day, it was, um, I believe, just a little like a soda shop if I remember correctly. I, don't quote me on that, I have to look it up. But um, I'm gonna take you for a really great coffee. You have your choice. You can have great coffee or you can have great ramen. Both are here at the corner of 8th and Hudson. So Elemental Coffee, one of my favorite coffee roasters. I have their beans at my house probably the majority of the time uh, when I brew coffee at home. They have a, they're a great place. And then uh, right across the street up there is Tamashi Ramen. Probably one of the best things uh, for ramen in town. The Tamashi is excellent. And probably one of my favorite dishes they have there is uh, not a ramen dish, but it's the garlic fried rice. It's fantastic. But you have to get pork belly on it. Little tip. Let's go. I like your shoes. Thank you. Yep. coffee when I go in there I'm gonna buy coffee anyway but then if I buy beans they give you a free coffee so it's kind of a no-brainer it's like I'm gonna use beans at home anyway so might as well just go in there and buy beans and get a free coffee Paul's Pizza Kitchen started as a pizza truck and, uh, and then they still have the pizza truck but then they got so popular they also have a restaurant great little pizza here Barrio's little Mexican restaurant uh, is awesome r and Supper Club. If you want some really, really good food, uh, go to r and Supper Club. They, they have that kind of that comfort food. It's just awesome. Uh, great bar, great drinks. Uh, atmosphere is amazing. But then the same restaurant group that owns r and owns probably one of my all-time favorite restaurants in all of Oklahoma City, Ludavine, right here. Ludavine is the place to go. They have such a creative and unique menu. You can sit at the bar, watch the chefs uh, cook if you want the whole time. It's awesome. I love Ludovine. And then this used to be the beer garden. They had it called a beer garden. It's now called the city garden. It's a little outdoor, uh, kind of just that, a beer garden. Hang out, drink beer, be their friends, you know, um, play, um, what was that? Oh, what's the beanbag game? What's the beanbag game? <laughs> so anyway, cornhole. There it is. You can play cornhole. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then Packard's. Uh, I will tell you, this right here, this church is, um, I can't think of the name of the church. 
Frontline. So this church right here, Frontline, great church. Um, they're all kind of throughout the city. But back in the day, this used to be a place called City Church. And when I was in college, I would come down here uh, and we'd go there on Saturday mornings. And we had this thing called the Big Red Bus Ministry. And so uh, a couple neighborhoods over here. So if you continue down 10th, we'd go up to 10th and Lincoln and 13th and Lincoln. Um, you, there was a couple of uh, apartment complexes over uh, 13th and Lincoln and 8th and Lincoln where we'd pick up uh, kids on Saturday mornings. Uh, they'd be waiting outside for us. We'd come pick them up, bring them back down to the church. And then we'd have a Saturday morning kind of kids ministry. We'd hang out with them, play with them, play games, um, have a little church service with them and then feed them lunch and then we take them home. So we did that for a, a lot of years. It's called the Big Red Bus Ministry when that was a uh, city church way back in the day. I was much younger then. So. <laughs> Driving south on Broadway, uh, I told you about Sidecar. Here's that Sidecar that's owned by that restaurant group that has Broadway 10 and Hatch, the breakfast place. Um, Uh, this city state right here is a great one. Well, you'll notice this red brick building that says parlor uh, Cool thing about the parlor. Uh, it is multiple restaurants and multiple bars all kind of in one location. So uh, well, You can go out with friends. Maybe people can't decide on what they want. You can go there. They have uh, all kinds of different uh, options for food uh, There's bars on multiple levels. They have a rooftop area. You can go there and hang out and uh, You know people can all get something different uh, you have some of the weights on you, uh, serves you drinks, and then um, and then you're right kind of right here in the heart of everything. If you need to, you can, you know, a lot of people do that. Then walk over to the Thunder game um, when they when the NBA team the Thunder plays. So now I'm going to take you over to uh, a couple other areas. Um, I know we showed you the dwellings, uh, but I'm going to show you some other areas in here with architecture and some homes that are in the Sosa district specifically red brick building and that white brick building those are two of my favorite these things are absolutely stunning inside I mean, they are so cool uh, I mean, so this architecture this modern architecture here I think is great but these two buildings or these two houses are phenomenal I, they had them open houses a few months back and I walked through those just beautiful beautiful architecture uh, cool buildings uh, and they made homes into them they just, they're awesome So you'll see through here, there's been a lot of building teardowns, home teardowns, where uh, I'll drive through here and you'll see architecture that was probably not common to this area you know, several years back, and like this street right here on 8th Street, and 8th and Chartel, all these here on the right, all new modern architecture. Uh, you have a lot of young professionals that are coming down here to live, be close to work, be close to what's going on. Um, I even know some friends, that, you know, they even, professionals that lived in Norman moved down here just to be down here because they love the idea of being able to live, you know, lock up the door, take the dog on a walk, bring the dog back, and then go out for a bite to eat, go grab a, you know, go grab a drink with some friends. Uh, it's really kind of changed. I mean, I've lived in Oklahoma my entire life, and of course, the Oklahoma City Metro, uh, for sure, since 1981. But... Uh, there, there's been a lot of change down here, and it's really neat to see because uh, where Oklahoma City wasn't an area where people would necessarily want to say we want to live down there and work, they just they worked. I mean, usually, um, when I was probably in college, late high school, you know, college days, you know, Oklahoma City once it was Friday, uh, everything kind of just shut down. Everyone left Oklahoma City, vacated it. They'd all go home to the suburbs. Um, because I would come down here with friends and we would rollerblade. We'd rollerblade all through here and it was a ghost town. You'd go in the parking garages, we'd rollerblade around, and none of this was here. I mean, obviously, some of the main architecture has been here for years and years past. These, these housing developments, these apartments, these townhouses, these condos were never here. And so, I mean, we could skate around downtown and pretty much have the city to ourselves. It was uh, unlike anything you'd ever seen because usually if you go to big cities, uh, there's always still a lot of traffic, a lot of people around, and that has really changed in the last, you know, 20 years. 